Good morning from Cape Town. The last week we discovered, uh, we discussed the, the dinghy and the safety and security on board. And this week's episode was going to be the foldable bikes and the scuba gear. We flew down yesterday um, because production on Sisu is going to start any day now and we need to wrap up. Yeah, we got the thing from Leopard, um, Daniel, which we will see very shortly, that we need to make the last call. So, you guys have been wonderful. You guys have told us a lot of, uh, gave us a lot of advice on what we need to do, what we don't need to do. So, we looked at all of those things and um, and we made big changes, which we'll, we will cover in later episodes. But yes, Daniel yesterday told us, it's enough. Enough is enough. We need now to make the final call. So now we're here in Cape Town to actually find out the last ones. And yes, we will have. We will actually talk to Marcel very soon, right? Uh, Marcel is the aftermarket guy. He's the genie that's going to make everything happen. So we will explain to you how um, how, how how the whole process worked. Um, where the, the factory option stopped and where the aftermarket option starts and how the guys is doing it here in Cape Town. So if there's any other questions, you can contact us at, on sailingsisu at outlook.com um, I will post the link in the video or it will also be below. And um, if there's any other questions that we don't cover during this interview with Marcel. So we're sitting here today, and I think Dallas was just over there, if Marcel is correct. So we're sitting very close to where Dallas was lying where they were, while they were here in Cape Town. Very nice area. We can actually show you later on how it looks like. Uh, Peter is here, we've got some Marcel here. And the after market yeah. dude. <laughs> Yeah, so Marcel is the best aftermarket dude that I know. So Marcel, you want to say what you do perhaps? Yeah, um, I'm, I work for Leopard here in Cape Town. Um, I'm mainly uh, involved in the international sales support and then also the after sales, uh, like you mentioned. So uh, what I do is I manage all the after sales work for Leopard, for the Cape Town handover boat, especially um, doing all the fitments, the managing of all the work on the boats. Today, actually yesterday, today, yesterday and today was the last time that Daniel told me this is not it. Yeah? No. What we do on this boat for the factory is done. Yeah? So, and this is why we now come here to, to Marcel because he will now take on the aftermarket stuff. So the, the leopard is going to, our leopard is going to go into production very soon. Then we can do nothing anymore. So all the parts has been bought and so on. But now we need to organize Marcel or he needs to organize himself to get all our stuff. So Daniel is now like Frick is off my back now. <laughs> so, how does that work, the aftermarket process? So, great. Yeah, no, it's, it's, good. it's a good question, Frick. Um, so, after your boat uh, is launched, it will go to the commissioning bay at the RNC uh, base close to the yacht club. Um, after that, the boat will be signed off by THL Marine, which is us. And then, um, yeah, straight after that, the boat will be handed over to you. Once the boat is handed over by, by Daniel, um, and you sign for the boat, obviously. Then uh, we yeah, we can start with the after sales. I think the biggest uh, uh, the biggest items and all the items you've ordered so far, uh, it's going to be quite a nice boat. Uh, a lot of uh, alterations done on the boat and the modifications, uh, nice systems you're going to have, especially with your lithium. <laughs> um, it's going to be the first Lippet 45 in Cape Town that will be that will be getting the lithium batteries as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's very interesting. Uh, it's quite a nice little project, and um, I'm glad you'll be happy with it. Yeah. So Marcel was the guy because um, there's a lot of changes because the viewers gave us very good advice. So we made a lot of changes, which we will maybe cover in a separate separate yeah. one on why we changed it. So what we said in the past, more or less, is still the same, but because of the input from the viewers, we changed a little bit. So. Marcel is going to do the solar panels, which we he's doing the, all the things there. He's doing the wiring for the solar panels. 
the Victorian system, the multi plus now. Yeah, we're doing the inverter, the, 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 the inverter, inverter yeah. charger. Uh, we're giving Frick quite a quite a substantial amount of solar, like you mentioned. <laughs> um, uh, Frick is also um, he's taking out the generator, I believe. Yes, the generator and is now gone, thanks to winds. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Frick will be installing bigger um, al um, alternators on the engines as well, yeah. which is the Sterling alternators. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, it, it'll save weight as well on the boat. So uh, yeah, that's quite a big um, after sales uh, plus actually. And I'm quite excited to see you know how much solar we can put on here. Yeah? It will be uh, it's, uh, quite a, a big amount. Um, and then yeah, we'll uh, connect that to the Victron uh, system as well. Um, very advanced system, yes. So there's the other one that we also integrate everything together is the XM Pro, which is not a standard on the Leopard 45 at this moment. Axiom is now becoming a standard. Yes, right? yes. Uh, the factory does install uh, the Axiom series, which is the Raymarine Axiom. Uh, the, the A series is discontinued, so they did replace them with the Axiom, the standard version. But what Frick is going to take on his boat, which is we are installing, is the Axiom Pro. Yes. RVX, which is the with the sonar as well um, <laughs> and the real 3D. So uh, it also, once again, I think uh, we can't go wrong with the Axiom 12 Pro. It's well, well advanced, especially uh, with the with the nice features it's got um, and the integration also can handle. And then the other one that I also think of is the Quantum Radar is actually the Chirp Radar. Quantum Radar is now standard as well, right? So that is that options is falling away, but forward sonar. Yes, yeah, that's the question. Um, unfortunately, Raymarine doesn't have a forward-looking sonar as yet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to supply Frick with a, um, a forward-looking sonar. It won't be Raymarine. It will be um, either BNG or uh, Simrad, uh, which we will then, um, which will be connected to a, a separate MFD screen, uh, just to power it up, and that will be re uh, that, that, that will be uh, just um, uh, mirrored on a on an iPad. Okay. Uh, which is quite nice. You can actually monitor your f your forward vision while you're in the cabin, um, and yeah, that's your forward looking sonar. Yeah, so some of one viewer, I cannot remember exactly, but he also said that we can put another like a, a iPad or a tablet down, and we have split screens. So the Axiom Pro 12 inch also can do three split screens, and then you can have the, the iPad that can also do the split screen between a radar from Simrad, uh, no, from, from Raymarine, and then a sonar, a forward sonar from that. So we can have both. Then on, so we have actually... And we found space for it as well. Uh, yeah, space. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll find place space. for a bracket, yeah. Great, yes. Okay. Then the other one that I asked Marcel, and he's still running around because Cape Town doesn't do titanium. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we were looking for things for, to just protect the peak for, for sheet ice. Sure, yeah, that's to protect the holes, you know, if you, yeah. uh, that's when you're going to, uh, it's not a matter of if, it's when you're going to, um, <laughs> to an Antarctica, just, you know, to protect the, the bowels from, uh, you know, from any ice packs or uh, whatever you mentioned. So um, titanium is a very hard metal to bend, so that's the problem we have of uh, fitting it onto the boat. But um, I'm quite, I'm quite I'm positive about this, uh, this kind of after sales item we'll put on the boat for you. It might not be titanium, but it's going to be um, either a very light, um, uh, a very light steel, stainless steel uh, strips we'll put on onto the boat, mm. and uh, yeah, that will do just before the boat launches. It's not that we're going to become an icebreaker. That's definitely <laughs> what I think a fiberglass boat should do at all. It's just mainly just that if you do bump again to uh, something bumps then it is uh, it, it will just make sure that yeah, we don't slice the fiberglass <laughs> yeah let's see how that works out um, the other thing that, that Marcel is also going to help me with is the tools and the spare parts yes and yes like no, that. I think spares are very important on a boat I think that spares are your best friend you don't want to be uh, stuck in the middle of the of the ocean and you know you can't use any of your equipment on the boat especially your, your engines or your navigational equipment um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to supply with a lot of spares engine spares um, navigational spares uh, you don't have a gen set so you'll save on that um, water maker spares that's quite important yeah. Um, so yeah we'll, we'll supply with a decent amount of spares and which is enough you know to last you quite a while
And one of the concerns, which is also my concern, big concern, is the balance of the boat because we will be on the port side. The fuel tanks, actually, no, the fuel tanks is are balanced. I did, I did not know that, but the, the fuel tanks are balanced. The water heaters are balanced, but the water tanks, which is just below here, um, is about 700 kg, 700 liters. Correct. So that's a lot of weight on this side. Although the tanks is more or less in the middle here, right? It's not like far off to the... No, it's, to it's, the not, it's not affecting it that much. Right. So, you will also look at how we can balance all of these things. Where the spare should go, where should the heavy stuff go, and where should the lighter stuff go. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, so, Marshall is actually a very good support in that. <laughs> yeah, great. I think also what would be nice is, um, as we discussed, maybe to, uh, to add another water tank on the port side, um, if you want to balance it out even more, um, as it... Uh, the current water tank will be on the starboard side, we'll uh, put another water tank on the port side and then the water maker will feed those tanks again, um, just to balance it out. I'm really thinking about the extra water tank and the reason is that even though that you're in Antarctica and there's a lot of ice, fresh water around you, you can, it takes too much energy to actually melt the ice, it's just, to, it's, that is a fact. That's why people die of thirst in snow. I have never, I just heard about it. It's because the, the ice, even if you try to melt, melt the ice in your mel it's mouth, cold, you cool, cool down yeah. faster than you can melt the ice and that's why you die right. of thirst. Right. So, um, yeah, we have a nice barbecue at the back, but I don't think we can really start cooking yeah. ice. It's just not it's just not efficient. So we need to have maybe more fresh no water, water on board. Yeah, no, it's always good to have a good amount of water, um, rather too much water. Um, and then of course, yeah, we'll do the, uh, the water maker installation will also uh, be on the port side. Uh, we have a plan with that, just to save space as well. Um, it won't go underneath your uh, port, port, um, port uh, bunk. It will actually go onto the inspection hatch on the starboard, so well, on the port hull, but, in, well, but on the right hand side, in the inspection hatch over there. That's where your membranes will be. So we'll save all the space underneath your bunk as well. And that is the reason why we actually didn't take the water maker as an option because we, we want to optimize a little bit more on the space. And, yeah. and yeah, my crazy request to Marcel is, is coming, he's doing quite well with <laughs> all this stuff. Another crazy request was the FLIR. And yesterday we talked with the Raymarine guy who was here. And um, they actually. The, the one that has the stabilization and the targeting and all of those things in is super expensive. It's like forty thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. yeah, it's close to about three. It's about three five to about forty thousand US dollars. Correct. Yeah, it is. Uh, sorry, I don't have that budget. But but Raymarine actually they came and Marcel was in the same meeting where we decided we will use the cheaper Fleur one that is that doesn't have the stabilizer but it can track. But it doesn't track with a gyro. It, it can just say there is something. So we can see also using that, but then we will use a normal Raymarine down vision camera. But it still will be on a spreader bar so that we can still see the round all around. Yeah. I think that's a brilliant idea to put the one camera probably on the on the one side of the spreaders, on the starboard side spreader, and the one on the port side spreader. And then um, actually synchronize those two to be able to get a nice view of the boat from the top. It also help with your docking. Um, especially uh, on, on leopards, um, I think it is, it's quite important, especially when you're new to the boat, when you want to dock the boat and you can't see the port, uh, the port forward peak, um, it's quite important to look at the camera and uh, to get used to the whole dimensions of the boat. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, and then Pietro is very, <laughs> she sure. cannot even see over, <laughs> you might, might even need to have a forward looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, note to self, there's a little thing that you also, there's another aftermarket thing you need to do. What's that? Little, that little step thing that I showed you. The oh. chrome bar with a little step that you put there as well. Right, that's so it's to idea. rest your feet on, but I can stand on that as well. Yeah, why not? So another, another issue that I have, which I think it will also be a pretty new to Marcel and his team, is when you have two alternators on, on the engine, uh, and, you, and there's a lot of rules with Yanmar with the alternators and things like that, so also Marcel will sort that out. But apparently one will only charge the starter battery and the other one will start, charge the house batteries. 
but I want it now to switch over that when the starter battery is charged then the, the second or the original one should actually also help charging the house batteries right. so to keep the balance because one is, is then actively and the other one is free spinning or something like that not free spinning but yes. it because of the less load it will not right. um, the side load will be reduced on that side so that is a challenge also for Marcel team because that has not been done <laughs> before yeah. not here by them um, yeah no I'm, I'm quite confident we'll be able to make it work um, but yeah, once again, I'm very excited about the lithium option on your boat, <laughs> and um, yeah, it will be nice to actually have a, a Leopard 45 with that option on it here in Cape Town. And I can see a lot of the Leopard 45s will will be asking for this nice option seat. in the future. Yes. Yeah, so for the aftermarket, um, we actually booked not this spot, but around here um, for about a month and a half. Correct. Yes. So, will you be able to do all of these crazy things in a month now? Yeah, look, there's a lot of preparation uh, before the boat even gets here. Before you even sign off the boats, um, all the items and all the all the all the um, all the projects and all the managers uh, must be involved. Uh, so everything can be synchronized. So the this whole big project of yours will will be actually you know just come Sorry. as one. And um, then after yeah after your boat signed off, everything must fall into place. Um, the boat will have a lot of contractors on at times. It will looks like an ant's nest, but um, that's the only way we can get it done in uh, in time because um, I think it'll take the most time to actually do your electrics uh, and the lithium wiring and right. all that. So that'll take the most most of the time. And then um, yeah, uh, on a weekly basis, uh, we have a meeting with all the all the different parties involved um, in the installations. We see how, how far they are, and I'll give you an update on you know, exactly which projects, where I'll be with each project. Um, I think it's quite important to keep you involved 24 7 actually. Um, so, Pietro. There'll be a lot of time lapses, okay? <laughs> <laughs> GoPro's all over the place. Sure. <laughs> so, Pietro is going to move down the moment we sign the boat. So, when can she start living on the boat? Should we think of having uh, a place for her to live? Because, it, like you say, it's going to be like an ant nest. Yeah. And well, what will be um, with with this specific uh, project, uh, you know, all the, there will be a lot of panels lying on the floors, uh, especially especially with the wiring. Um, there will be a lot of people on the boat, so uh, to live on the boat during that time will un un unfortunately not be be really possible. Um, they're in early mornings and they leave late. Um, it will be a bit dusty. The boat will get dirty inside. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll advise you know if you can get a place somewhere close to to stay, and uh, she's welcome to be on the boat every day. You know to come look at the progress and that. So um, but yeah, I won't advise anyone to stay on the boat when we're doing this kind of after self project. Well, at least for at least the first three weeks. Uh, what? At least for the first three weeks to a month. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm stretching it now. You want but, to, yeah. Yeah, you want to yeah. get onto your new shiny house. <laughs> yeah. Get used to it. Yeah. The spaces uh, and that, yeah. <laughs> but you're not, I mean, you're buying quite a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a nice house. That's why we want to move on to the boat. Yeah. As quick as possible. Well, it's going to give me time to sort out where to store what. And also, I need lots of advice and comments. Whoever's got any advice and comments, where, how do you store stuff and where do you store it? So I'm going to need that as well. Sure. But then at least I'm here to see and to figure out. Yes. No, that's very important. But yeah. Um, just come back to your handover process. The boat will, uh, before we sign off your boat, you'll go out on sea trials as well on the boat to test the boat to see that you're happy. So um, once that's done, uh, you're going to have to give the boat to me so we can start <laughs> with the projects and that. Uh, so for until then, uh, the boats will be moored, like you said, it will be moored here in the marina. It will be safe over here um, under supervision of, of Leopard itself. And um, yeah, and the process will start. There was one more thing that I was thinking now. Catamaran MP Brent, me and Brent had a long discussion one night while he was on Anchor Watch and he told me that the Code D is going to be um, the, the sail that stays the longest on and so on but they also asked me to, to reinforce it so for that reason I had to remove one of the options because there's, there's a Grenicker and a Spinnaker so the Grenicker is, is a Fold one while the spinnaker was not a fold one, so we're now removing the spinnaker off and we're putting now a code D. Also, yes. Marcel's job to find me a nice sail 
with UV protection, a little bit stronger. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, on the on the on the leopard option, the um, the code zero is not a furling code zero. Yeah. Um, so uh, we are doing a furling code zero for you now. You already have um, a code D. So okay. we are adding now the, the filling code zero. But the code D must also have ultraviolet yes. protection. So it's not yes. the standard. It's not the standard. So we, uh, we're going to ask the cell maker to add the UV protection for you so you, so you can leave it on permanently. Okay. Um, if you don't put that on, yeah, you won't have a cell. Well, it will take three to four weeks and you'll damage the cell completely. Oh. Yeah. Not an option. Yeah, very expensive, uh, <laughs> very expensive fault one can make, yeah. <laughs> No, so thank you for thank Brent. You Brent. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Brent. MP, that was a very good advice. But now these guys have a bigger headache, <laughs> or more headaches. <laughs> no. no, I think they have more fun. Yeah, no, um, um, to say, fun. we have fun with the owners as well. Uh, you know, we, we like to also make their dream to come true and for them to be happy. Uh, we are in the service business as well. So, and I, I believe we are selling a, a great product. So why not just improve on it? Uh, I must say is one thing that I've picked up on the Leopard 45 owners group and also on the Leopard owners group is that Leopard are doing a great job. They yes. want to give a service and this is actually one of the guys sitting right here giving us a great service. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for Leopard and thank you for Daniel on the other side. Yes, um, it's just been a pleasure, the experience so far has just been awesome. Yeah, the experience was really, really, really nice. really not yeah. one single thing that we had a problem with so far. So it's yeah. yeah. No, it's good to hear that. It's good to have owners that they give these contacts. Yeah. And just Catamarans is on the other side. Yes. But we have here in South Africa, I think, a better team. Yeah. No, I think you have the advantages of uh, the factory also being here and being directly involved here as well. Yeah. Um, first hand experience. And um, yeah, I think the whole uh, experience should be nice. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, like pulling teeth. It should be quite a smooth experience for you. And uh, once your boat is finished, uh, it's going to be, I believe it's going to be one of the best Leopard 45s that we've ever did uh, after sales on for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that will be awesome. So I think that's it, no? Yeah. Thank you, Marcel. We will talk later. I be flying off to Joburg very soon. Uh, get the hand inspected again. <laughs> the arm. Hopefully that will not break it a third time. And then, don't uh, go there. Just don't <laughs> go there. <laughs> uh, I need to be able to sail. But thank you very much, Marcel. No, uh, no thanks for having me. No, thanks thank you. you. Right.